<laughs> hello, hello, lovelies. It's Wednesday evening, it's eight o'clock, and we're ready for some live sewing. I am just gonna wait for a few people to come on. So if you join me on replay, say hello and pop replay in the comments so I know when you're coming on. And if you join me live, give me a little hello as well when you come on and join me. So I'm give people a few minutes to come on and make sure I've get, got everything, because like I normally do, I've forgotten something, of course um of what we're gonna make today so i'm really excited i feel like i haven't been on for ages it's been a couple of weeks because i had workshops last week and then the week before i can't remember what it was maybe i did come on then i can't remember but i feel like i haven't seen people for ages and done any live sewing so hopefully some of you will come on and join me live hopefully i'm in the right group as well let me know if you join that i am ah! Join the, join the wrong one. I've got my water tonight because I always get a really dry throat when I'm up here. Oh, poor connection. Let's have a look. Okay. I've got a bit of poor connection up here tonight, so hopefully I'm not going to lose you guys. So hopefully it's going to be okay. I think I just lost it then. So I'm going to get started because... People will hopefully join when they're ready. I know this is near bedtime for a lot of people, well, bedtime for children for a lot of people, that is. Um, I get out of it, of course, because my husband takes over when I come up here. So what's everybody been up to? Who's been watching The Great British Showing Bee? Um, are we feeling inspired? Oh, no, I've got poor connection. Hopefully I'm not going to lose you. Who's feeling inspired by the Great British Sewing Bee? Um, hopefully it is giving you some inspiration to have a go at sewing some stuff. Hello, lovelies! If you come on live, give me a little hello, a little wave or something, um, so I can see who's come on. Yes, so it is inspiring, isn't it? To watch and sort of think, I could have a go at doing that. Maybe I can make some clothes for myself. Um, all that type of thing. So, hello, Kathleen! <laughs> Welcome lovelies. Oh good, everyone's coming on now. I'll wait for a few more to come on. Um, I was just saying, sorry, my nose always runs. The Great British Sewing Bee hopefully is making us feel all inspired um, to get to get behind our sewing machines. And if it's not, hopefully to make some smaller projects if we don't want to venture into dressmaking as such. Hello Debbie! Right, so what are we making tonight? Well tonight we're making the mug caddy. So this is the mug caddy and I've had this in my sewing room for quite a while because we made this, I made this with my social sewing ladies a couple of years ago when I used to do my Friday evening sew um, sewings at the local community centre. Hello Tracy, oh lovely um, and I call it the mug caddy because it's a mug and it sort of caddies everything you want to put in it. Now I use mine for my stationery and it's always in my workshop so if you come and visit me for a workshop you've probably seen it on the side. I keep my glue sticks in there, I keep my washi tape, my pens, you know my paper scissors, that type of thing but equally you could keep your sewing stuff in there as well. They also make fab little gifts, um, you know imagine doing that in gorgeous fabric it's for a little person um, you could fill it with all their favorite bits and pieces you know you could pop some sweets in there if you wanted to it's a great for, for Easter as well so you know whatever you want to use it for um, and all you need is an old mug so I found one out of our cupboard my son's um, you need an old mug that you're you know not keen on anymore it can have some chips on it you know before you throw it away use that one and you just want to consider how big your mug is. So this one's quite a tall one here. This is sort of a bit, bit shorter and a bit rounder. So, you know, have a think what you want to keep in it and how big you want that mug to be. And then you need to choose your fabrics. Now, this is using a mixture of fabrics. I've got this stripy one here and some spotty inside. And then I've lined it with some just some plain fabric underneath. If you could just see that there. Um, so you can raid your scrap drawer if you've got one. Um, this is a great little scrap buster again, which I also love to do. And I've also used some bias binding on this for the ties, but you could use ribbon, you could use some of the fabric, you know, you don't have to use bias binding. So whatever you have to hand is a good thing to use. So hands up if you think this is a cute idea. Who would you make one for? Hello lovelies, hello Siobhan, who have got Catherine? Ah, Charlotte, well done. Welcome, welcome. So we're making the mug caddy. So here it is. 
And this is what I've chosen to make my muck, mug with. This is what I've chosen to make my mug caddy with tonight. So my mug, obviously, um, I've hooked out some, I don't even know what this is, like a polyester sort of lining fabric that I had. I've just given that an iron tonight because it was screwed up. So I'm going to use that for my lining again because you won't see that. That's on the inside. So you can use anything for that. So I've got that. And then I'm going to use some nice fabrics. I've got this lovely new one that I've been using for some new products I'm making. So I'm going to use that, I think, for the main piece of the fabric. So like this blue spotty. And then I'm going to add my lovely cactus fabric for the pocket around the outside. So it's going to look all fun and bright. Um, and then I'm going to use some bias binding because I have lots in my studio. And I'm going to use this lovely yellow one to make the ties and also just to um, finish off the top of the pocket here. Now this one has been made with um, the sort of thicker cotton canvas fabrics, which is pretty good because it's quite hard wearing. But I am using a cotton fabric today, so I think I'm going to double, double this one up to make it a bit stronger. This one here is a thicker one anyway. So just bear that in mind as well. If you've got the thicker fabrics, they're sort of a bit more hard wearing, so it might be worth hooking them out to use. Oh no, Tracy can't see me. So what's to do first? Hello, Tracy, or two Tracys come on at once. Hello, everyone. Lovely to see you all. So I'm gonna make a pattern first for my mug. So all we need to do to make our pattern for this is we want to measure the height of our mug from top to bottom. And then we want to measure all the way round up to the edge of the handles because it just goes up to the edge and then the ties go through the handles to keep it all together. So we want the height of our mug and then all the way around to the handle. So that's what you want to do first. And it's worth getting a bit of a scrap paper, baking paper, pattern paper, whatever you want to do to just give yourself a little guide, make draw yourself up a pattern, just works a bit easier. So let me find a pencil in my mug cabby, cabby, caddy, can't talk tonight, and measure my mug up. So so it's been fantastic seeing everyone sewing, still posting on the group. Well done, everyone. And people still making the lovely flowers. Amazing. I'm sure there'll be more made as well coming up to Mother's Day and things. So I'm just measuring around my mug now. So that's 24 centimetres. I'm just going to write that down. And then from top to bottom as well, my mug is nine centimetres. So that's literally from the top rim to the bottom nine centimeters now we are doing a lining so there is a little sort of seam allowance we almost need to add on so all i would only add a small one i'd probably just add on a centimeter to each of your measurements will be plenty so i'm going to do 25 by 10 in that case so I've measured top to bottom and around to meet up to the handle and then added a centimetre onto each of those measurements. So I'm going to draw that out so I've got a template now and then I can use that for all my pieces. So I'm going to go 10 down, turn this around so you can hopefully see me. So just really roughly really making myself a little template. I'm sure you guys would do it much neater than me. To 25. Lovely, and I'm going to cut that out. And this is the only template you need for this, so it's fab. So it's nice and easy to make. So I'm just going to cut that out now. And then that gives me a guide of what I want to use. So I've just used literally a bit of lined paper here, nothing more, nothing glamorous to make my pattern piece. So that's my pattern piece. So that's 10 centimetres down and 25 across. So that was the width and the height of my cup um, mug plus a centimetre on both of those measurements. And that's my pattern piece. So that hopefully you can sort of double check it before you do it. That's going to go all the way around my mug look with that little seam allowance as well. So that's what you need. And then you want to decide what fabrics you're going to use where and this is what you're going to need to cut out so you're going to need to cut out from your inner piece of fabric so this blue bit here which goes inside and on this outside here you're going to want to cut two of those from your chosen fabric so i'm going to do that with my stripey one 
and then you're going to want to do the same with your lining fabric as well who else have we got coming on how exciting kim janie danielle kayla Gemma, hello lovelies oh lovely lots of you tonight thank you so much for joining so who's going to have a go at making this hopefully when we're finished at the start if you go back and watch the replay if you've just joined me I was saying it's a really fab little make um, to store, well, whatever you want in really. I use mine for stationery, but you could store your sewing equipment in it as well if you wanted to. Or also would make a fab little gift for a little person. You can make it in really funky cut, um, fabrics like I'm making tonight. Fill it with stationery for them or fill it with some chockies or something, you know, whatever they're into. So a great little gift idea as well. So I'm going to cut this out of my chosen fabric now. So all I'm doing... Can you all see this? I'm just going to move my comments out of the way a minute to check you can all see this. I'm a bit shiny with my lights, I'm sorry. Um, I'm literally just laying my pattern onto my fabric here now. And then I'm going to cut this out. So let me just pin that on a minute. So I want two of these cut of my main fabric. So this is not my pocket fabric. This is my main fabric. So actually I'm going to cut these together move some of my stuff out of the way so it takes about roughly you can definitely do this in fact in a fat quarters worth of fabric obviously if you're using different types of fabric you're going to have you know varying amounts of different fabrics but you can use it out of your stash um, this is definitely a stash buster project which is always good we always feel good about those projects because you don't feel guilty about having to buy anything new. You can use it out of what you've got. Always good. So I'm cutting these two. Now what you could do if you want to, if you cut like I'm doing here on the fold. So I've cut this pattern piece out now of my main fabric and I've cut that on the fold at the top just for ease really of getting the two pieces together. Um, you could potentially leave that like that so that you don't have the seam line along at the top but I quite like the seam line I quite like having that sort of seam along there but it's personal preference really up to you so if you wanted to cut it on the fold like so so you would fold the fabric on this long piece here top or bottom well actually top if you've got a fabric that needs to be the right way up you could keep it like that and then you wouldn't have a seam around the top of your mug anywhere um, because what this bit of fabric does is it sits in your mug and comes over the top like so okay um but i quite like it the seam so personal preference up to you entirely so i'm going to cut mine in half now so i've got two separate bits of fabric you can choose what you want to do so i've now got two pieces so that's my main fabric that's going to be in my cup and on the outside and then on top of this on top of the outside piece of fabric i'm going to then cut my pocket piece so the piece that i want to use as my pocket so let me move all this out the way i love this new fabric i found it online and i'm making some new products for my shop in all these gorgeous pastel colors they are looking amazing by the way um, yes, I can't wait to show them all to you, but this gorgeous fabric is in it and it's lovely. I love all the pastel colours. These are all my branded colours. The pinks, the greens, the turquoises, the yellows. That's what my studio's painted in. So I love it. It's lovely. So the pocket piece. Now the pocket piece um, is just a little bit shorter than the actual mug, but I'm going to cut it the same length because... By the time you've messed around with it and applied it to the actual, um, you know, the mug caddy, it quite often, you know, shrinks a little bit anyway in the seam. So I'm going to cut this to the height of my mug um, exactly the same, okay? Because it doesn't really matter if it comes up the same height. It, it's a pocket and once you've got stuff in it and the pockets are kind of opening up a bit anyway, it's going to hang down from the top. So just cut that the same. If you're using a thicker fabric, you just need to cut one of these. So this fabric, for instance, was a thicker fabric. I just cut one. The inside is the same as the outside anyway, so it looked fine. Because I'm using a cotton fabric today, and the outside is obviously not as lovely and bright as vibrant as the front, I'm gonna cut two and I'm gonna have a lined pocket. So I'm gonna cut two of this. So let me just make sure I use this fabric 
wisely. So again, I'm just going to fold this in half to cut the two at the same time with my pattern piece. That's handy, a little bit here. So what has everybody been up to this week so far? Who's been off with the children at home? Um, it's quite nice, I must admit, not having to worry about half terms quite so much anymore. Um, and I have managed to get a bit of sewing done. So I had childcare on Monday for them. Um, so that was, I kept that in place. So I did some sewing on Monday, so that was lovely. So I had a really creative day up in my studio working on new things on Monday. Um, and then Tuesday we went and enjoyed some trampolining at Oxygen and Southampton, so that was a nice day. But I took my laptop with me, so they went in trampolining with friends and I sat in the coffee, in the cafe and done some emails, so that was good as well. So we done that, we had fun doing that and then today we've chilled out at home and had friends around again. Um, yeah, so we've had a good week so far. So what's everybody been up to? I'm just going to put my comments back now because I can't see them. Let's see who else is on. Jackie... Um, Nikki, hello. Um, Janie, Easter coming, so good present. Yes, definitely, Janie. This would make an amazing present. I literally can envision this with an Easter egg stuck in the top and then some little gifts all around the side. How sweet would that be for Easter? Good idea. Definitely. Charlotte, I'm going to be making one for two year who loves pens and pencils at the moment. Yes, definitely. Such a fab idea. Oh yes, a plastic cup, that's a good idea. Not got any Christmas ones that you've got off the, um, somewhere. Someone always gives a plastic cup for something. Amazing. What's Nikki done? You've been to Mama Zoo, that sounds fun. How was that? Haven't been to a zoo for years. So, back to it. Sorry, I get distracted with your comments. So I've got my two pieces cut for my in and my out. And then I've got my pocket cut. So I've done two because I want to make it lined because of the type of fabric I'm using. So just weigh up what sort of fabric you're using for that. And then I also want to cut my lining fabric. So lining fabric. So this one I am going to cut on the fold and I'm going to keep it on the fold um, because... Yeah, you might as well. You're not going to see it. It's going to be underneath. So I'm just going to fold it in half, my fabric in half, long ways. So my fold will be along this top long bit. So what it means by cutting it on the fold, the folded edge, which is this edge here at the top, that's where the top of my pattern falls. So that when I then cut the bottom off and the side, I can open it up and it's cut on the fold. So let's lay my pattern piece on top. So laying down my folded top, pieces up here and again just using that one pattern piece that we've cut really really simple Move that out of the way. there we go so there we are pattern piece taking that off so that's cut on the fold so I can then open that up like that for instance and the fold will be at the top so that's my lining piece I'm going to put that out the way for the time being so my pattern piece can go aside now so I've got my pocket piece I've got my inner piece and the outer piece that the pocket will be attached to I've got two of those and then I've got my lining piece which I've cut on the fold so a nice big not quite a square but almost who else have we got? Oh, well done, Siobhan. Woohoo! Amazing. Having a good dressmaking. Um, yes, fantastic. Well done. Can't wait to see that in the group. So that's our pieces cut now. So, you know, there's not a lot of fabric there at all. So these are perfect for raiding what we've got at home. Um, now to start sewing. So what we want to do is prepare the pocket piece first. So that's this blue stripey bit round here. Now on this one, I've added a bit of bias binding to the top because I obviously had a raw edge. Um, with this particular one, I've cut two pieces. 
so I'm going to attach these along the top so I don't necessarily need to add a bias binding because I won't have a raw edge but I'm still going to do that because I really like it and it's bright yellow so what I'm going to do to attach my two pieces of pocket together I'm going to put those right sides facing now bearing in mind I've got a pattern so make sure those patterns are the same way up and we're going to be sewing along the top so along the top of the pattern so there's my pattern my pa pieces of oh goodness pieces of fabric right sides facing sewing along the top thank you Carrie hello well, let's have a look Charmaine sorry I had to watch the gorgeous Hugh Jackman for oh what have you been watching the greatest showman Charmaine sounds good I'll let you off yes he's much more handsome than me um, I'm going to spin you around because I'm going to go to my sewing machine now yes I love this fabric and I have this in my shop it's sold out this is the last little bit I've got that I'm using keeping for me it's sold out completely now it was very popular so yes, it's lovely. So I'm going to sew all the way along this top now of my pocket, just on a straight stitch, nothing fancy. Um, and I'm just following line along the edge of my foot here, my sewing machine foot to the edge of the fabric. It's what I always do when I'm making these small projects. It's just an easy, nice, easy, simple seam allowance to follow with no fuss. Um, I'm going to do a little back stitch. Oh, he was on the Brit Awards. I didn't know the Brit Awards was on. So out of touch with telly, honestly. Right, so just sewing across. And you'll see. So next week I'm coming on, I think, live on Wednesday from memory. I don't think I've got a workshop next Wednesday evening. Um, and I've got a little project in mind for that already, um, which one of my sewing ladies has asked me to do, which I thought was a fab idea. And we're going to be making a little pencil roll. So a little roll um, that you put all your pencils in, roll it up, pop it in your bag and take it out, um, you know, for the kids to play with. Or equally, you could put makeup brushes in there or crochet needles in there, whatever you fancy, of course. So we're making that next week on our live sewing. And then we are into March, so we're making... We're doing our Maker Skirt March, which is very exciting. So next week, look out for, I'm gonna post up some guide, well not guidelines, but I'm gonna put a little post up about Maker Skirt March next week, telling you what you might need if you want to join in and what we're gonna be doing through March. So keep your eyes open for that one, definitely. That's very exciting. So I've just done my straight stitch along the top there now. So now what I can do, is turn that in the right way and there I've got my double-sided pocket. Perfect! So what I would normally do is give that press but my iron is right the way over there because you know I didn't foresee needing to use that tonight so I'm going to hand press this but I'm going to use the bias binding along the top as well because I like it because it's pretty and what I would normally do as well with bias binding I would iron this in half. So this is a narrow bias binding. This is 18 mil wide. I sell this in my website, um, but I also do 30 mil as well. But for this purpose, because I want the ties to be, you know, I don't want them too chunky. I want them to be quite thin. Um, I've gone for 18 mil. So what I would normally do is iron that in half. It just makes it a bit easier to control because it keeps it nice centrally folded before you sew it on. But of course my iron is over there, so I won't be doing that tonight. So I'm just gonna cut this and go for it. So I'm cutting it the length of my pocket piece. So I've just cut one piece of bias binding the length of my pocket. And then I'm gonna attach this to the top best I can without ironing it. Um, and sew that on. So let me get some pins. Just to hold this flat first recommended for you guys to iron this and press it as you go press your seam open on the top of your pocket if you've if you do that and iron your bias binding in half of course because pressing and ironing makes your project so much nicer end result um, particularly if you start into venturing to dressmaking you're going to need to be pressing your projects to keep them nice and flat and easy to sew who else have we got oh let's have a look well pencil roll yes exciting oh no it's not my internet is it Jackie hopefully I did lose connection at the start but luckily it seems to be all right now so 
I've popped some pins along the top. You don't need to do that. I've just done that because I haven't ironed it flat. So it just keeps it a bit flatter for me. And then I'm going to put my bias binding along the top edge here. So it would be fold ironed in half. And then you just literally straight over the top. If you've got fabric clips, fantastic. Use those. All the way along the top. Clip it or pin it or whatever you want to do in place first to hold it where you want it and another reason why I iron bias binding in half if I'm using it like this um, is because then equally hopefully you're going to know that it's equally folded over your project so when you sew down one side the top side is going to catch the back hopefully if you don't iron it in half you're not going to quite know so well um, particularly if you don't use it an awful lot if it's you know equal both sides excuse me so I'm going to just literally sew that on now with a straight stitch all the way along and that's just going to finish that pocket off nicely. What that also does is gives the pocket a bit of structure along the top as well. So it sort of holds it nicely. So it is a nice little touch. And if you haven't got bias binding, you know, you can make your sort of own version of that from home. You could just use some fabric, um, cut a strip of fabric. So what you would do, you don't even have to do it on the bias because we don't need any stretch in it necessarily. Just cut a strip of fabric, find the centre fold, so iron it into the centre fold, iron the two sides into the middle and there's your bias binding. So you can use any fabric you like for this purpose. It doesn't have to be cut on the bias. That's only if you need it to have a stretch, which doesn't matter. Yes. just sewing this on so again on this point as well if you want to sort of make your um mug caddy you know if you want to add your own individuality to it you could do a fancy stitch along here on the bias binding if you've got some nice fancy stitching on your machine you could do that at this point give it your own little touch have it bias binding has been attached check it's caught both sides which it has and that just sort of finishes off my pocket nicely I like that I'm going to cut off all my strands one of my pet hates cut these off get rid as we're sewing and there's my pocket complete so that is now ready to go so let's now apply that pocket to our outside edge um, before I do that actually I'm just going to attach my outer and inner fabric together to go over my mug so this fabric this one i chose is the equivalent to this blue spot so it goes on the inside of the pocket here and it goes inside the mug as well so i'm just going to attach this together as well so right sides facing exactly the same just make sure i line these up sewing across that top edge again so remember, if you've got a fabric you want to be the right way up, remember to consider that when you're putting these together to sew. But obviously my stripes don't matter. that I'm now going to attach my pocket piece cut off my threads so there we are that's now sewn together okay so there's my seam along the top so you might not have that if you're leaving it on the fold it's entirely up to you so again press that at this stage I probably would so you've got a nice fold along the top as well but we're now going to apply our pocket to this piece so you can leave it laid out like this if you want to. It's probably just a bit easier than trying to keep it folded together. And we want to apply our pocket to one side of this. So to the side that is going to be on the outside of our mug, this side here. So on mine, it doesn't matter. You know, it really doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to pick this side and I'm going to lay my pocket on top of this. Now, with this one, I cut it a bit bigger, but 
and it's got a big massive pocket I didn't purposely do that it kind of just happened but actually you know it's you don't need that the pockets will automatically pull out a little bit as you put it round your mug so what I'm going to do is just move this in slightly from the edge line this up and pop a pin to hold it in place so I've just pulled it in just slightly from the edge and popped a pin in it and I'm going to do the same the other side very slightly not very much at all so not even you know the seam allowance okay and that gives it a little bit mine's got a little bit of gape there anyway and then I'm going to decide how many little sections I want so this one has got three it's got one here one here and then this big gaping one which I'm not sure what happened on that one um, so I'm going to decide what I want here so I'm probably going to go for three again so maybe pop a pocket here and there's no sort of right or wrong to this literally I'm just sort of plonking them wherever I fancy so where those pins are so there's a pin there and there's a pin there that's where I'm going to sew my pockets on so all I'm going to do now is have a look who's commenting I use a travel iron as a small one for little pieces that's a good idea Charlotte. I did have a travel iron I used to use in my old sewing room but because it was on all day on occasions it kind of burnt out I was like oh probably need a big one but that's a really good idea yes um oh I keep freezing that might be me Charlene it might be me freezing although mine doesn't say it but my connection wasn't great earlier hello Lindsay so I've applied my pocket to this bottom piece here now so I'm just going to sew the two end bits on just a straight stitch down and then I'm going to sew straight across where my pins are down and down and that's going to make my pockets so let me do that and then I will show you what I've done afterwards so right from the top take your pins out as you go we don't want to be sewing over our pins One side down the other side So that's my two edges now sewn down. So just on a straight stitch down there and a straight stitch down there. I'm just going to do my two um, pocket areas now. So where these pins are. So I'm literally just lining up my machine with the pin. And sewing again all the way up. going right up and over my bias binding but you could if you wanted to just go up to the top of where your bias binding is so when I'm sewing here I'm going right over but you could go up to here and then you'd have sort of a little lip almost at the top of your pocket it's up to you and I'm just going to do this other one Again, you can spend a bit more time considering what you want to put in your caddy, what sizes you want the pockets, you know, how close you want them to be. You know, you can spend a bit more time having a think about that than what I'm doing this evening. So I've done mine fairly even. Mine are fairly even sizes. Just cutting off all my strays. Let's get rid of all these. Okay, so I've now got, so if I fold this back in half, there's my pocket on my little caddy. There it is. So I've got a little pocket there. I've got a pocket here. And I've got a pocket in the middle. So actually, I've probably got a little one on this edge, a bit bigger in the middle, and then sort of medium in, at the other end. So that's going to fit a good selection of things in. I've sewn right up to my bias binding, and it's right at the top of my um, lining fabric, which is absolutely fine. And there's my, my other piece of fabric there, look. So... There's my two inner and outer fabrics. One bit's now inside my pocket. The other bit's up here out the way. That's going to be inside my cup. 
and there's my little pocket on there. So the next bit we want to do is prepare our ties. So these little bits here. Let's see who else is on. Oh, what's that? What's Jackie got? Oh, Jackie's got me on phone and computer. Woof, God, two of me, Jackie Crumbs. Um, <laughs> oh, hello, Lynn, uh, Helen. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. So next we want to think about our ties. So I'm using bias binding again for my ties to match the top of my pocket. But you can equally use some pretty ribbon if you want to. Anything you can find that's going to tie nicely and keep it together. So a little tip for this. Um, the cotton feel of the bias binding keeps the knot held nice and tight together without too much effort. If you're going to use a ribbon which is silky, it might not tie quite so tightly. So just bear that in mind. So I'm just going to use bias binding. Now, I'm not sure how long this was. Let me measure this. So let's have a look and see what I've got on this little mug. Where did I put my tape measure? Where's that gone? Oh, over here. Here it is. Okay. So these are roughly 17 centimetres long. So I'm going to make my ones a little bit longer on this one because actually I couldn't quite fit that in a bow when I made this one. So I'm going to make mine 20 centimetres long. So I need to cut four pieces of ribbon or bias binding, whatever you're using, 20 centimetres long. That'll make it a bit longer than this one I've got here. Just drop my tape measure. So I'm going to cut that now. Now with my bias binding, when I use it for this type of thing, I never normally worry about finishing off the edges. I normally just cut it, it's pretty good. It doesn't really fray that much. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I, it does the job I need it to. So let's cut four of these 20 centimeters long. And then again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these in half. So that I've got no raw edges on the centre to make my little ties. So if you're raiding your stash, you could use a selection of ribbon or bias binding, whatever you've got. You know, it doesn't have to all be the same. Um, I'm obviously very lucky. I've got a whole shop of it here in front of me. Oh, hello, Anna. Welcome. So there's my four pieces of bias binding, all 20 centimetres long. I'm now just going to sew these in half. So again, I would normally iron this to make it slightly easier, but my iron is not with me. So I'm just going to fold these in half. And what that does is it gets rid of this, these raw edges on the inside and just finishes it off really nicely, makes it into little ties. I'm not going to worry about these cut raw edges. I'm just going to leave them as they are. So I want to try and get these in half as best I can. So recommended to you guys, obviously iron it in half if you're using bias binding. Do a little back stitch. All the way down. So if you wanted to get it super neat, so I'm sewing along this open edge here. So the edge where I'm folding it in half, that's where I'm sewing down. So to get a nice neat finish, you want to stay fairly close to that edge. Make sure you're catching the underneath as you go, which is why you want it ironed in half. Um, take your time. Cut off your threads. So there's one done. So can you see that just finishes it off nicely, makes it into that little tie. So I'm just going to do the other ones quickly now while you're watching me. So hopefully some of you are thinking now about who you can make these for, what fabrics you might be using to have a go. Our houses are going to be filled with all these practical little makes soon. Fabulous. particularly loving this bright yellow at the moment it's very nice and sunny 
um, yes, I love it. So all of these bits and pieces you can buy in my little stock shop as well. I'll just plug myself there. I've got a website called ribbonandthread.co.uk or madebylucykiss.co.uk. Um, and you can buy my fabrics and all these vice bindings and bits and pieces, fabric clips, just been restocked in fact. So you can always head over and have a look on there as well. If you're local to me and you want to pick it up from me, you just pop local in the discount box as you get to the checkout and then drop me a message to come and collect. Um, or of course I'll post out to you. And I try and keep my prices as reasonable as I can. So if you look, um, quite often you won't be able to find um, anything out there at the prices that I offer because I love you all very lots you see I'm very good to you all so yeah head over and have a little look on there when you've got a minute to whoops some of these bits and pieces are going out to my sewing ladies that have signed up to do my six-week course which I'm really excited about um, the enrollment for that closed at the weekend just gone so I've got all my ladies lined up now. It's all very exciting. They've picked their fabrics and everything. So I can't wait for that to start in a week's time. So lots of these gorgeous fabrics are going to be going out to them to make their sewing machine covers. And if you're local, you might not have noticed on my online diary, um, I've actually added a four-week sewing machine cover course to my face-to-face -face workshops in the studio here. So, you know, I had some ladies... Um, who sort of said, oh, I would like to make that, but I'd quite like to make it with you in person. I know, Jackie, yay! Um, so I've, I've listened and I've added that in. So in May, there's a four-week course in the studio here, really limited numbers, only four people available for that one um, to make the sewing machine covers with me in person. So if you'd like to have a go at that and you're local to the studio, then, you know, head over and have a look and book that one in. It is really limited. So once the places are gone, they're gone. And hopefully some of you gorgeous ladies who live near me will be able to make your very own sewing machine covers as well in the studio. So yes, very exciting. I've got some ladies on here that joined me last time on my online course. So they've all got sewing machine covers at home. So it's all very exciting. So I've done my four little ties here now. I've sewn them in half. There they are, little spaghetti ties. So now I'm going to put those in place on my little um, pocket fabric here. So I've still got my fabric opened up like this. And then I want to apply my little ties um, on the pocket piece down here. So you probably want to do, let's have a look what I've done on here. I've done about two centimetres down from the top, my first little tie. And about probably, well, probably about one, one and a half maybe. Remembering a little seam allowance as well. So if we go for two centimetres in, so that's two centimetres or even one and a half. I'm gonna say one and a half. So if we measure down one and a half centimeters from the top of here, so let me just show you the top of my pocket. Oh, I'll do it right. I'm gonna measure down one and a half centimeters. So we'll come to this little notch here and then I'm gonna put my first tie at that one and a half centimeter mark. So it's gonna fall here. So at the bottom of the one and a half centimetres, that's where I'm going to place it. Your ties need to be facing inwards towards your pocket like this. So let me just do that. So measuring one and a half centimetres down from the top of my pocket, from the top of this bias binding, lay my little tie on there, facing in towards my pocket like this. And then I'm just going to clip that in place. And then I want the other side to be the same. So I'm just going to do my bottom one a minute and I'm going to fold it in half. So I'm going to do this bottom tie now down here. So there's my top one. One and a half centimetres up again. Lay my um, tie on the top of that one and a half centimetres and then clip that in place. So let me just show you what I've done there. So there's the top of my pocket. I've measured one and a half centimetres down and that 
that falls on the top of my tie here. So that's one and a half centimetres down to the top, clipped that in place. And then I've measured one and a half centimetres from the bottom here up to the bottom of my tie here. So this little gap here is one and a half centimetres. And I've clipped that in place and they're both flicking in to the middle here. So across my pocket, that's how I want them to be facing. And then I wanna do the same the other side, exactly the same. So I'm going to make sure these are put the same way around. So what you could do is fold it over if you want to get it exactly the same position or actually if we fold it the other way. So what you could do is fold your case in half, line it all up. Not that it evenly matters, you're not going to particularly see that this is in the same place. But what you can do is then line it up with your clips that you can see. You see there? So I'm going to place that one there and then put another clip on. This side, I just want to turn that round actually, like that. And then the other one, I'm going to line that up with that clip, pop a clip on, and then I've got all my ties. So all my ties are going into the middle. Can you see? We want them into the middle. So I want them kept out the way. So what you can do is put them all to the middle like so and then pop a pin in there to keep them all out the way because we don't want them getting tangled up in these edges we want all of that in the middle out the way see if you can get a pin through it if not stick a clip in it or something just to hold it out the way there you go can you see so we don't want it pulling too much on these side bits we want them still to be nice and straight but we want them kept out of the way of all the seams all right so they're just in the middle there out the way so next what we want to do is add our lining on top of this. So we've got all this lead in front of us and now we want to put our lining fabric over the top of all of that. So depending on what you use for your lining, maybe you're not going to see this bit particularly. I'm just laying that on top of what I've already got here. So right sides facing, there's the right side of my pocket and my little caddy. My lining is going on top of that. And then I want to pin that all around. So stick some pins in there. Or clips, whatever you're using. I'm just going to move my clips to the outside edge. Just holding my um, straps in place and just moving the clips out. Like so, so they don't move. And then I'm going to sew all the way around, but I want to leave a gap. Now I want to leave the gap not on my pocket piece, but somewhere along this piece, it's going to be inside my mug. So my lining is actually a bit longer. So I'm going to now cut that off because I obviously did that seam where I joint my main fabric together. So I'm just going to trim this down so it's out of the way. Okay, so my pocket is down here. I want to leave a gap up here somewhere to turn it in the right way. Okay, so we don't want that on the outside of our fabric. And just sewing all the way around. And we're almost there. So exciting. So let's have a look. What else could I do? I'm just going to fold open this seam here as well to keep it nice and neat. So I'm going to start on one edge of my opening. So say my opening is going to be there. I want to start here, sew all the way around and get up to here and stop. And there's my gap. And again, all I'm doing is following the fabric on the edge of my sewing machine foot. piece here where the pocket is and where my ties are we just want to make sure we can see those ties poking out and we can see our pocket fabric here in the seam as well we want to be sewing over all of that so what you can actually see you probably can't see from there is I can see my seam line here my stitch line where I attach the side of my pocket so I almost want to be following that down again and then I know I've definitely caught it in my seam Holding my little um, ties in place so they don't wobble around too much. Taking my clips or pins out or whatever you're using as you go. So again, along this bottom edge, you need to make sure you're catching all of your layers in there, your pocket, your lining and your top layer. Now, if 
if you've got really big pockets, so if you decide to make your pocket much longer and have really big pockets in there, you're going to have these little folds in here, these little pleats. So what you want to do is before you sew along this bottom edge, you kind of want to fold your pockets flat at the bottom. Mine aren't that big, so I'm literally just folding along and it will make the pleats itself. Probably won't even have any because um, it's pretty much the same size. But if your pockets are much bigger, just consider when you put your lining on top that you might want to fold those pockets in and make your little pleats there. the little tie so when you're doing this part before you do this part it's always worth just double checking your lining and your top fabric are the same. So give it a trim before you do this bit. Because then when you're sewing round, you're not ever going to come across, you know, come a cropper where your underneath fabric might be a bit shorter than your upper fabric. Always make sure it's the same, both sides, so that when you're sewing around, it's nice and neat and you're not going to miss any, you know, make any gaps in there, miss any of the fabric. So I'm coming up to this top bit again now. So I started here. So I want to finish here, give myself a good, well, probably three inches maybe to turn it in the right way. The temptation is to get carried away and forget that you're leaving the gap to turn it in the right way and then have a tiny little gap, which is always a bit of a nightmare. So what you can do is either leave some pins in at those two points to start and finish from, or just draw a little mark on there, you know, draw a mark where you want to start and finish to, to remind you to not sew the gap too small. So there you are, I've sewn all the way around, I've left my gap at the top, I've caught my lining and my outer fabrics, they're all in there. What you can do before you turn it in the right way is double check down the seams that you can see your pocket and you can see your little tags there. If you can't see them, you probably haven't caught them in your seam, so you might want to take it in a bit. So I can see there, look, my pocket fabric. I can see my little ties there poking out. So I know it's all caught in my seam, so it's gonna be okay. You can check the bottom as well. Make sure you can see your pocket fabric there, look in the seam, to make sure it's all caught in all the way around before you turn it in the right way. What you can also do to take a bit of the bulk out, you might want to trim it round, possibly. Um, if not, I would just cut the corners off just to take a little bit of the bulk away um, for when you turn it in the right way. It's all four corners. You might want to trim some of the edges down. Neaten it up at this point. Just takes a bit of the bulk away. Um, and then once you're good to go, you need to turn it in the right way. This is always the exciting bit. So mind out if you've put a pin in the middle, just mind that. What you can do is feel inside and take that pin out before you turn it in. Or clip or whatever, there you go. There's my pin and then you could turn it in the right way. So what I normally do is I get one of the bottom corners, push my finger in it and push it up through. And then I do the same normally to the other one and that brings the bulk of the fabric up and out. Oh, it's exciting! Always love the grand unve unveiling of our projects. There we are, turn all the corners out. It's looking good. So you might want to give it another press at this point. There we are, That that is what it should look like now. You should have your ties coming out. You should have your pocket in here, all caught, all the way round. Your opening is at the top and that's going to be in your mug. So what you need to do is lay that nice and flat and then just finish that off either by hand or a little top stitch along there. It's going to be in your mug anyway, so you're not going to overly see it. I'm going to use, I've got white thread, so it's going to be quite invisible anyway. Hold it nice and flat and you'll be able to get it nice and close to the edge. seals up that hole like that 
there you go so I've just done a little top stitch along there you see you can't particularly see it so that's absolutely fine and then you want to apply it to your mug so this is the exciting bit you then want to get your mug loving these fabrics you want to twist it around your mug like this and then so literally hold it around your mug so the ties are up to the handles like so and then you literally just push the top in and that is it that is what you do and over time those fabrics stay in there and the ties keep it all snug together so I'm going to tie these handles now it's a little bit tricky they sort of fall to one side of the handle this is much better this 20 centimeters I've got loads here to, to tie a really nice bow Okay, so I would um, avoid the temptation to cut your ties off if you've sewn them, if it's a bias binding, because if you cut it, you're going to lose your back stitch here and then it's going to come unraveled. So just be aware of that. If you've used ribbon, of course, you can, you know, cut it down if you want to. And then I think on my other cup, I tied underneath the handle, but I might be able to get this one in the handle as well. So I'm just going to attempt to do that. I might actually, so this is where it's, you know, play around. I'm going to tie this one above the handle, am I? Am I? I'm going to tie that above the handle? No, I'm not. I'm going to keep it underneath. It keeps it much more snug. Do what works for you. I remember on this mug, I've tied one in the handle and one underneath the handle because the handle sort of come down here. Whereas this mug, the handle stuck out at both ends. So I'm going to try and tie it both within the handle on this particular one. Okay. It's a little bit fiddly this bit, but... Okay. And then it's deciding what to put in it. So if you want to make it into a sewing caddy, you could at this point um, put a pin cushion in the top. So like I was saying earlier, one of my ladies who made this in my social sewing group, oh, must be almost two years ago now, um, made hers into a sewing caddy and she added to the top a fabric pin cushion. Oh, look at that it's fabulous and then you just adjust it so I think this tie almost needs to be underneath there it's sort of pulling it up so you just need to decide what's going to work for your particular mug let me just do that hang on a minute we will get this right this is the trickiest bit of the whole thing oh yeah that's better underneath there you are that's better that holds it down much nicer Actually, I've, I've tied mine up far too snug now. So one of my sewing ladies actually made a pin cushion to go in the top of hers. So literally what you would do is, you know, cut a big circle of fabric, stuff it, pull it in tight at the bottom like that, ruffle it in, you know, tie something around that. And that sat in the top and made a pin cushion. So again, you know, you could do something like that if you wanted to. Um, it really depends what you want to use your little caddy for. So let's fill mine with some goodies. So let's have a look. What can I put in there? I might keep pencils again in here. So let's have a look. Let's put some pens in here, shall we? Let's not get it dirty. Make sure I've got lids on these pens. So pens, some scissors. What else have I got that I could put in here? Um... I could put some of my sewing threads in there in the top, for instance. I could add some of my sewing clips around here if I wanted to, around the top of the pockets. Whatever you fancy. Ta-da! How fabulous does that look? So there you have it, my mug caddy. So actually, these little pockets are quite taut on here. So you might want to add a bit more to your length of your pocket pattern. So if you're going to do that, what I would suggest is in your pattern that you cut, just add like another five centimetres on and that will just give you a bit of sort of extra um, leeway in your pockets so they're not quite so tight in there. But it still works beautifully. I've got my pens and my pencils in there. I've got my threads in the middle, whatever you want to store in there. And it looks super, super cute. So there you go. Look at that fill it up with goodies how cute is that 
there you are i can't wait to see what you all come up with and your different um you know adapt it to suit what you're what you're trying to get for yours um, adapt your pockets you know you can have them like this one that's got a really big gapy pocket to put bits in it's entirely up to you um, and I can't wait to see them so I hope you've enjoyed that that's my little mug caddy um, the little pockets around it the lovely little ties super bright and fun I can't wait to see yours I hope you've enjoyed that ladies who's going to have a go at making one let me know who's going to have a go at making one of these I can't wait to see them in the comments I'm loving that. I'm just thinking what else I can put in mine. What else can I store in here? Let's have a think. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to consider this and decide, I think. But I think I'm going to use that now as my pen caddy. I'm going to swap mine over. There's a couple of pencils. Let me put them in the little side sections. There we go. Look, pencils. Let's put my glue sticks in. Let's put the pencils with the pens. Oh, loving it. Perfect. Are you going to start making it now, Nikki? Woohoo! Well done. Love it. Oh, perfect, ladies. Fabulous. Made one with me, Tracy. Amazing. Pop a picture of yours. Let me know how it looks. Um, and let me know if you're going to make another one. Remember to consider how big you want your pockets to be. You might not want them to be quite as tight as mine. This is live a video, remember? Um, so we learn as we go. There we are, there's my glue sticks. Looks very neat though, I must admit, with the nice little taut pockets. My scissors, my pens, love it. Well, thank you so much for joining me all. You're all amazing. I can't wait to see your pictures um, in the news feed. Next week, I'm going to be sewing again. I will double, double confirm it's going to be Wednesday. I think it is, but I'll just double check my workshops. Um, and we're going to be making the pencil roll and then after that we're into March can you believe and we're going to be doing make a skirt March so look out for that as well so very exciting thank you all so much of course for joining me um, you're always amazing joining me on live video and I can't wait to see your gorgeous makes so yeah if you want some fabrics and some bias binding head over to my shop as well I will put the link in the comments for you all go and do some online shopping um, I would love to supply you with all the goodies to make these as well so there we are have an amazing evening ladies and I'll see you all soon bye